meeting stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. <laughs> Voice here. Mr. Here. Mrs. Burns. She's there. She's on the. Yeah, she's there. <coughs> Mrs. Delaney. Here. Mrs. McBride. Here. Mrs. Mungo. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Dr. Singh. Here. Mrs. Warning. Here. All right. Welcome to the regular meeting, school board, Gateway School Board, Tuesday, July the 16th. Um, we had a school retreat workshop over the weekend on Saturday where the school board uh, members just came together um, and just um, did retreat stuff, workshop, um, making sure that we're working well together. Um, we also had an executive prior to this meeting um, started this meeting at 5.30 this evening, and we discussed contract and personnel. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, presentation and comments from residents on agenda items. With that, do you, do you have anything? It's actually missing from the agenda. Okay, so it's on a non-agenda item. Okay, all right. And we will have a, a section in the, in the agenda for that. We will, I guarantee. All right. Okay, so board member discussion items. Go around the table. Anyone? Jack? Nothing. Dr. Singh? Nothing. Don Nothing. John? Donna? She's left. No. Bus uh, was leaving, sorry. Okay, all right. Leslie? Do you want me to discuss our discussions about separating the committees? And um, I don't know if there's a need. You know, we'll just go ahead and make that separation. So, Susan, Cheryl, all right. All right, minutes from the previous meeting. We need a motion to accept those minutes. Motion to accept. Second. All right, any discussion? Roll call. Good Mr. Miller. Mr. Burns. Mr. All right. Mrs. McBride? Aye. Mrs. Mungo? Aye. Mr. Aye. Dr. Singh? Aye. Mrs. Morgan? Aye. Mrs. Blaze? Aye. All right. So I'm now going to turn it over for the financial reports. Okay. Mike, I think we just have uh, the list of bills. Thank you, Dr. Rossi. I have financial reports on a 5.1 list of bills, July 2024. I'm a second. Discussion. All right. Mrs. Delaney? Aye. Mrs. McBride? Aye. Mrs. Mungo? Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Dr. Singh? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mrs. Boyce? Aye. Mr. Bova? Aye. All right, personnel. Thank you, Dr. Rossi. Um, three resignations as listed, 14 hires, including one custodian and 13 educators, along with the approval of the various supplementals as listed. And then concluding with the cyber facilitators for the 24-25 school year based on enrollment. Uh, just teach at the high school. Second. Questions, comments, discussion. <coughs> I say welcome to the to the new employees. <coughs> All right, no discussion. We'll go ahead and take roll call. Mrs. McBride. Aye. Miss Mongo. Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Dr. Singh? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mrs. Boyce? Aye. Mr. Bova? Aye. Mrs. Delaney? Aye. All right. 
administrative resolutions. I'll take that one. Item um, 7.1 and 25% group approval of the agreement for professional development services. Uh, 7.2 is the resolution uh, to permanently close Gateway Middle School. 7.3 um, is a workshop for Superintendents Academy in Harrisburg. Item 7.4, an agreement between New Story Schools and the Gateway School District. That's an annual agreement. Also have the revised agreement with IUP and the Gateway School District for three additional reading interns, up to three, total of four. And 7.6, an MOU with the Allegheny Intermediate Unit uh, for the Title III Consortium. Mike, thank you. Oh, come on, <clears throat> Item 8.1, approve the Gateway Middle School change orders as listed. Item 8.2, approve the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Preschool Early Intervention Program to lease three additional classrooms. Monthly payments will increase from $826 to $3,098 a month. Item 8.3, approve approval to reinstate the capital projects account. The funds allocated for the capital projects account will be used specifically for that purpose. And item 8.4, acceptance of the district donations received during the 24-25 fiscal year. Cheryl Klonowski, Monroeville resident, donated 15 pairs of shoes, 10 sweatshirts, and socks to University Park Elementary. What's that? Uh, question. I need a second. Second. I was just curious, we're uh, allowing for three additional rooms, so what is our room going to be up to for the year? No, this year? That is the, that's the intermediate unit. That will be our internal one. Oh, yeah. okay. So we initially were talking at the nurse's office in one classroom, now we're doing three classrooms. Right. Okay. Yeah. Four. Okay, it's oh, four. four. It's a total of four, So right. three on top of the initial right. one. Can I ask another question under your yep. resolutions? Um, the new story. How many kids do we have going there? Uh, I can get you that number. I'm just curious as to what it, we're it talking It fluctuates about. throughout the year, um, depending on the, the need. Yeah. I can get you that exact because number. that's based on the number of kids we're sending over there. Correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. not doing it's usually an IP team stress. decision. Yeah. Okay, just curious how many we're talking. I just have a question. 7.3. Yep. Dear God, where she can bring some candy back. It's, it's <laughs> Harrisburg. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're close. Maybe I should bring Sorry about that. It's really close, though. The chocolate isn't that far from here. But I know. And I, I know we have the 7.2. We have the Mossside Middle School closure. Um, and I don't know if this is kind of related to this. I know that there were some parents that were um, maybe having a conflict with the time for the tours. From what I understand, the administrators are to make they're, some they're going to be very flexible to make sure flexibility. any family okay. that wants to come they'll have that opportunity okay yeah so if that, all you need to do is uh, contact the office he's going to send another blast out next week good to uh, alert the parents of that okay so those those open houses are really open for whether you're in fifth grade or eighth grade the fifth grade orientation is, is typically what we've had in the past because it's a big jump from fourth to fifth grade okay so that, that, that'll be more concentrated um but we also want to give Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade opportunity to see the building too, and find their classrooms and the cafeteria and all that. So, in case parents aren't reading their email blast, yeah. they can hear this. Yep, yeah, they, there will be every opportunity to, to come visit the school. Okay, yep. all right, can, that won't be a problem. Ask, so, six, seven, and eight isn't necessarily. I know. I think it does say orientation, and then so what is so the fifth grade orientation is that so six seven and eight would be more like the teachers are going to be in the classrooms but no, then this more of a, a guided it could be a guided tours they're going to be guided tours and self-guided tours okay so the ones that are marked sixth yeah. seventh and eighth yeah. grade really should be guided tours and not necessarily they're not missing an orientation no no okay. yeah i think that's where some of the yeah. barrier came in yeah the, the tours were for a sixth seventh and eighth grade <clears throat> 
Okay, so no official orientation. Any new, any new student who may, who may have a new student in seventh grade, there'll be an orientation for any new student in all fifth grade. Okay, thank you. How are we going to notify the public for the days, the day that that's open to the public? What are you going to use the newspaper? What are you doing? We're going to the newspaper. Um, our our new um, communications person's on that as well. Oh, the new yeah. communications person. Yeah. Sometimes it's Yeah. Before. And it's connected yeah. with the community day. Um, the mm -hmm. no, 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 community, community day is over with. Yeah, oh, so that was in June. No, was our, com of, our, like, community yeah. Yeah. our community like, night. Our community night. Like national night out. Like national night out. It's not the same time. No, it's August 6th. Okay, national night out. So this is going to be the first project we have for communication AKU person working on for us to notify the public about that. Yes. So they're getting their feet wet with us. Yes. Uh, we're, we, we're in contact with the church across the street and the parking lot, the John has a but get go behind get go there because there's about 250 parking spots. So we're going to try to run two shuttles, maybe even a van and a shuttle as well. So make sure you communicate with the mail the uh, ministerial interfaith ministry uh, program because they're churches and congregations. Yep. Yeah, we can send, uh, Jen is sending actually the letters out. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll add that we could add the ministerium. You could put it on through the uh, municipality too, because I'm assuming all the council people, oh, mayor, are on the list. Everywhere. Yeah. Personally, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. I'm wondering if you could put it out on that council TV. Yeah. Okay. Leslie and I were at the council meeting last week and came to their TV 15, and they will be also putting that on their bulletin board. Yeah. Um, what all? Yeah, it's going on good. Thank you. I brainstormed with him about two weeks ago as well. Mm -hmm. So, separate from us, they're also doing their thing. So, the question is put our team and their team in order a little bit better. So, um, they're handling that behind the scenes as well. So, they're definitely going to be there. Correct. And I'd just like to say thank you to Cheryl Klonowski um, for the donation uh, of the shoes and, and the sweatshirts and socks. Um, it's probably going to make a difference in a kid's life. And it goes a long way. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. The things we, we sometimes take for granted that other people don't have. Socks are a huge need help to those children. Oh, yeah, yeah. Socks especially, I, I, yeah, yep, yep. Going back a minute on the um, uh, publication or letting everyone know communication for the open house and so forth, uh, I'm in touch with Leslie, who is the same I already said it to her. The time express, is there a certain day you want are they going to cover or because she has been asking i not to interrupt but i have been in contact with her and sent her my jack's information so okay. she can type, reach out to him oh okay she just comes and look at their pictures that'll be she probably the 20th the august 20th yeah. yeah i knew it was that day i didn't know if you wanted her there another time before that or yeah, yeah. Okay. okay all right so we had a, a motion, it was second. I guess it's time for a vote. So go ahead, roll call. Mrs. Munger? Aye. Mr. Aye. Dr. Singh? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Boyce? Aye. Mr. Bellow? Aye. Mrs. Delaney? Aye. Mrs. McBride? Aye. All right. Next would be board member resolutions. I don't think we have any. Anybody have any? All right. Next would be comments from residents on non-agenda items. It is now your turn. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind going up to the to the mic, to the podium, give us your name, and just make sure you speak into the mic so everyone can hear you online. Online. Hi, my name is Jody Price, a resident. I have two daughters here. Noticeably absent from today's agenda is the middle school girls soccer coaches and i just wanted to ask why um less than a month before the season 
you're not naming coaches. We're not. I'm sorry. What there's was no that? Co we, we, there's no coach on the agenda. Because they're still interviewing for the coaching position. And when is your deadline to have that completed? Dr. Rossi and I have the intentions of having all remaining supplementals, um, as there's a slew of them that are unfilled at this time on August study session meeting for approval from the board. Do we think that's a great idea that the girls have already started practice with coaches and there's a potential change? That would be very disruptive to them. My, my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, this is a six week program that was started in the middle of August. Is that you're referring to summer, potentially summer workouts or summer, se okay. summer sessions okay. and summer workouts okay. through, through that time. Okay. Potentially. Yeah. Then I'll yeah. have you explain that. Yeah. yeah, it, we're just, we're gonna, we have to, get, we have to work through the process of filling the position. That doesn't mean we won't have the position filled by the 19th, but we, we, we could have the position filled really in two weeks. Um, just officially on the 19th, which would allow us, we have board policy that allows us if everyone has their clearances and, and other credentials in that they can, they can start. Okay, I had another question about, for rant, just coaches period, what are the requirements? Are they to be certified? Do they have to be certified? Like what level of coaching do they have to have? Or is there no requirement for that? I think there's, we have Coach Hall up there, but I don't think there's there's no licensing or certifications that are, that are required. Um, they submit a resume, they're interviewed, um, and then we go from there based off their experience. Coach Hall, are you on? I am. Do you have anything to add, not to interrupt Dr. Rossi? No, just uh, as Dr. Rossi said, uh, there, there are certifications, there are certain educational programs that have to be required within two years in Pennsylvania. Um, basically a, a required state program of hire. So every coach, once they're hired in a, in a high school in Pennsylvania or middle school in Pennsylvania, has to complete a sports education program, which includes some, some things like first aid and health, but also includes some things about coaching principles and that sort of thing, essentially a two prong. Uh, as far as um, practice, again, to be clear, uh, many teams do off-season workouts and do voluntary trainings. Uh, our boys, middle schoolers, are working out with our, our varsity guys in separated, segregated groups. Uh, the girls have been invited to do the same uh, while those voluntary trainings are going on. Uh, in the meantime, real practice doesn't start for any fall sport at Gateway until August 12th is the earliest and August 19th for most middle school programs. So um, we're not... We're not practicing anywhere yet. Lots of teams get together, do voluntary training, including football, basketball, still doing open gyms, uh, soccer, as I mentioned, the boys have the middle schoolers with them. And the girls have been invited to join that group too, as well as our, also girls volleyball, which is another very pressing and touching issue that we're close to uh, wrapping up. Can I ask a question? Because I, I apologize, Don. I was having a little difficult time hearing what you were saying. You're saying over, after a period of time, they have to have specific trainings. There are outside entities that train for different sports. So does it have to be something through the state that we recognize? Or can they have coaches training through some of these other outside organizations? Because a lot of times they go to classes, they get certified, they have a certificate. But it may not be like like through WIPI or PIAA. Um, so how, do, how does exactly that work? If they come to you with some certification from someplace, is that is that significant? Well, the PIAA's requirement is a very specific one that has to be done by all PIAA member schools. And we're a member at both the high school and middle school level. One thing I didn't mention is it's a, life, it's a lifetime deal to do it once. So if someone had done that training, that specific training, not not cup training, not, you know, somebody's basketball academy, but they had gone and gotten the PIAA coursework done, ASAP it's called, if they had gotten that done at, let's say, Plum, and then we hired them at Gateway, they wouldn't have to do it again. But we can't accept training from other entities, again, for standardization. The PIAA requires their own training to be completed within two years of hiring or in a public high school. Or middle school so they have two years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing more coaches with me, but I think that should have been 
if you're looking to replace or whatever, the hiring process should have happened sooner because it's going to disrupt the girls. Because I know a lot of them have no idea and they will be upset. I came home today to a letter that my daughter wrote that, thank you, Mrs. Morning, she gave you all a copy. Um, I won't be able to read it because it will make me emotional. And I feel like most of the girls will feel the same way. So changing it, I think, would be a tragic mistake. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So administrative report. Uh, none this evening. None. All right. And I'm assuming there's probably no board committee reports because we all had our last board meetings um, a while ago. Um, I just wanted to say, I guess there were a lot of kids that, Gateway students that participated in the 4th of, 4th of July parade. Um, I wasn't there, but I want to thank them for their participation. Um, and it's always good to see our students outside of the school, in the community, because that's what we're all about, community. So I applaud them for um, probably waking up very early to get in line, <laughs> in the hot sun, and for a very long walk. But they got their, their steps in. So thank you. I just want to say also, as part of the 4th of July committee, it couldn't have been done without Paul Westock. I have to say he was in charge of it. and. Uh, it's a very trying time to make sure everything comes together, but it was um, really applauded this year. I mean, we had a lot of new groups and everything like that, and people really enjoyed it, and they made it in record time. So Val's not saying this, but she's on the committee that every year helps put all those you know, 200 or so elements of the parade together. So thank you, Val, for doing that every year. And I understand there were at least 90 different groups uh, oh, participating. That's what I heard Paul said. That's and that's a lot. I don't know how many people are still waiting to hear what the uh, unofficial yeah. count. All right, all, right, all right, so I'm in the parade. I'm walking God, down. I'm in the parade. My daughter, uh, granddaughter is three years old. I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to walk by. I'm going to say, OK, come over and walk a few steps with Grandpa. So I, I called out to her. She's looking at this bag of candy, looking down at the <laughs> I'm saying, come on over. Now's the time. You can walk with me. She's looking down. So her mother says, go, go walk with Grandpa. Go walk. So she walks over, and she's still looking down at her bag of candy. She <laughs> wanders over, and she wanders back. So who's more important, me or Candy? Candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's part, you know of the the it's yeah. part of the attraction. The kids yeah. love it. But, yeah. And the other thing, make sure you have enough candy. I ran out of candy. I didn't expect it. <laughs> but it is such a nice and way. They're, for and they're the, looking at me, and I ran out of candy. It's it's such a nice way for the whole community to get together and celebrate. Yeah, it was well, well attended, and other people from other communities were so impressed that they, you know, Murraysville was there, plumbing all these other communities because they appreciated uh, the parade, parade as well. It's, it's we have our first meeting tomorrow for next year. <laughs> I would like to say I met with the Gateway um, Foundation, and they're looking forward to working with you, Cheryl, as our liaison. So excited! Um, it sounds like they they they're on a good path, um, and there are going to be some good things coming from their organization. So I can't wait to see what they're going to do. So at some point, I'd like to uh, have them come with me, and we'll go down to see our state rep because there is monies through the state that a lot of districts who have foundations have tapped well, into. They're working on that. So you will need to get in contact with them, make sure you guys It's talk. always good to see if we can That's, pull a few strings together. Yeah, they got some things. Uh, application process. They got a lot of good people involved, yeah, so, I'm yeah. Looking forward to that. All right. Are you looking for a motion to quit? Yes. yes. Motion to quit. Oh, hold on, hold on. Um, a couple of meetings ago, we had a gentleman from Pitt Karen come in, Mr. Galia, right, Jeff? Yep. Um, and he had requested about renaming our north entrance at the high school. Uh, Michael, do you by chance have that? Um, this was put up last week and for Scotty Williams as it's made Scotty Williams' way. And I just want to uh, say thank you to Monica and John Krakovich for getting this up and ready to go. So for the folks who can't see, there are a double door, security doors, and above it, in about one foot high black lettering, really nice prominent, it says, Scotty nice. Williams Way. Nice. Well done. Now, the plan ultimately is there also is going to be an exterior sign with the uh, folks at Forbes will be 
responsible for the impact. Nice. Yes. Jack, did you nice. show him that? I did indeed, yes. Oh, so Scotty has seen it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Nice. That's wonderful. Thanks. And, and one other thing I see that Christopher Wright from the high school, he is one of the chemistry teachers who is resigning. A fantastic teacher. I had the opportunity to work in his class many times with him and his students, and I was a little surprised, but I wish him well. With that, take a motion to adjourn. Second. All right.